The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 5th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your host, D.B. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have a wonderful Wednesday. Of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to, it's to always know, folks, that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I, we make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to throw at us. We're going to go take a look at the circumstances of what the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers, are trying to communicate to you and I. Of course, I'm absolutely honored by your presence here, and I'm here to serve you. So feel free to call on in at 877-927-6648, or you can call in at 727-445-1044. I'm absolutely here to serve you. Would love to do that. Of course, this is wonderful Wednesday. Welcome to the Hotel California. That's Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow trading basically flat, up five points at 17,555. S&P is up about eight and a half points at trading at 2102. Composites up 44 points, trading at 5149. Russell is up three points at 1232. The DAX finished up at 111,636. I was up 180 points. The FTSE up 65 at 6752. Gold trading down five bucks at 1085. Silver is flat at 1456. Uh, light sweet crude back 70 cents at 45.04. Movers and shakers in the market. Movers to the upside price line up 75 bucks, nearly 6%. USANA Health, USNA, that's up uh, about 31 bucks, up 23%. Google's up 2.5%, up $16. Regener is up 13. Uh, Buckaroonies out there to the downside. Moving and shaking to the downside, it is Caesar Stone. That's down about 15 bucks, 22%. Walt Disney Company off 11 bucks, down 9%. Advisory Board down about $9.60 off 16%. So we've got things moving to the upside and to the downside out there. But where should we begin our day? What is the market communicating to you and I uh, at the uh, 109 time frame out there? Well, I think what you and I want to do is let's start off by taking a look and understand where the price oscillators are, the summation index uh, for the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ Composite, and the Dow. Now, what you know, because you tune into the show every day, you know that the, that the market breadth, the wider swath of the market, the New York Stock Exchange, has been communicating a message to you that it is not ready to go down because it's been the strongest indice off of the uh, bottom from last week. As we take a look at it, uh, coming off of that, oh, don't do this to me on my system out here. That's really crazy. Uh, as we come, I don't know what the what's the date out here. It looks like it is July twenty seventh. I've lost part of my uh, my my crosshair out there. That's a real bummer. Makes it really hard. But I got nine minutes to go in the show. We'll figure this out. In any event, coming off of that bottom out here, what we can see is on the uh, trading day of July 29th, that price oscillator got above zero. It cruised from the oversold level to right above zero. There was never even a look back. And what that says is in two days period of time, there was plenty of market breadth. There were plenty of net of advancing issues, advancing versus declining issues to go ahead and do that. Super strong in order to be able to do that in that short period of time. Now what we know is that even though the market's been zigging and zagging, not so much the case inside the New York Stock Exchange when we take a look at still its market breadth. Price oscillator still above zero. What does that mean? That says that the New York stock exchange is more likely than not going to go up and at least hit that descending price channel. Is it going to break it? I don't know. But more likely than not, it's going to be able to get up and uh, get to that level. Where is that at? If I had my crosshair, I'd tell you. It's somewhere around the 11,000 area. That's for sure. Just looking at my... Uh, 
and my system out there. Wow, what a bummer. I'll just, uh, in any event, let's go take a look at the uh, NASDAQ composite. Now, the NASDAQ composite, now this, this indicator, as I've shared with you many times, its best use is at the end of the day. I'm not with you at 4 o'clock today, but if the markets and the composite were to end here as we speak right now, again, that would change depending on the net advancing issues, assuming there's going to be net advancing issues today. If we were to end here right now, the uh, buyers would be in control. That price also just squeaking above the uh, zero mark out there as price has for a second day, second out of four, made that 0.618 retracement off of the high to the low by getting back to the 51.53 area. Now, what the NASDAQ composite is trying to do, it's trying to clear that uh, swing point. Oh, good, it's back from July 31st. And any close above... Let me see out here. Any close above that swing point, we'll go take a look at the Qs out here. But any close above 51.55, that can set up an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, inside the NASDAQ composite, if it were to unfold like that, let me see. Well, I'll do it from a different. Well, no, I should do it now. Uh, let me uh, see if I have that study on my system and then I can turn it on. If not, I can just simply add it. Looks like I'm going to go ahead and add it here. Give me a moment just to uh, do that. We're going to go take a look at our A to B equals CD tool out here. Because if that price oscillator can take out that B point, volume or not, if it can take it out, if it takes out with volume, then you know you have a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. And what that would do would be, uh, well, as soon as I can uh, get things to really, that's so weird, so weird. Uh, let's try that one more time again. That's our lightning bolt uh, tool. We went into that yesterday, so I won't go into the long dissertation. But if it can close above, oh, shoot, I was grabbing the wrong swing points out there. No wonder. If we can, uh, give me a moment here. This is a small A to B equals CD. That could be setting up out here. Come on, work with me. Work with me. We're on live TV out here. So there we go. Uh, that could actually give you a run into, well, it says it gets back to the highs because your one-to-one -one A to B equals CD takes you to 5204. Um, I would say more likely than not, you'd get up to about the 5237 level. You'd actually just squeak out and take out that high from the trading day of July 20th. So the real key level to be paying attention to today, tomorrow, is going to be 5155 inside of the NASDAQ at composite, as well as whether or not that price oscillator does close above the zero line today. If it does, the sphincter muscle of the uh, sellers and the bears out there We'll get to uh, tighten up pretty quickly. Now, the Dow has been really lagging here today. You got Disney trading down quite a bit. I didn't get a chance to really look inside of the uh, Dow to see what else is going on. But let's go take a look at, um, and when I say it's been struggling, you know, its price oscillator did get above uh, zero back on July 29th. Um, and it came back down here by August 3rd uh, yesterday. Earlier in the uh, trading session, it actually had made an attempt to get above that uh, level, that zero level out there. Look, if that can get above it and close that way today, as well as the composite New York Stock Exchange out there, now that will be certainly short-term bullish for the, uh, for the overall markets out there. So that's one of the things that we want to pay attention to. Nonetheless, we'll still go take a look at some other correlations out here that we'll want to watch. But knowing that the composite here, we just took a look at a potential A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, just before I was coming on the air, you know, I was trying to identify and notice, hey, where where is the where is it that you and I should really focus to get some type of clue as to what's going on inside the market? And it was really the five-hour chart here that we're taking a look at. This is for the NASDAQ futures, which made a nice little low out here back on the trading session uh, July 28th, right around the uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon time frame. Nice little price relative strength divergent pattern. We see price has certainly moved above that little short-term descending price channel. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. I'm not interested in that so much. But earlier in the day this morning, as the uh, NASDAQ uh, mounted its chart, out here it actually made that uh, sixth wave pattern see that letter f out there and that says uh, maybe what it does is it goes ahead and gets up into that uh, seventh wave as it, in fact, gets up to those highs out there. Now, the you can see that price is trading right at its uh, TAS market profile high. Let me do this. I'm going to put up this chart here. That was on the 300-minute time frame. Let me put up this chart here for the uh, NASDAQ. And do I have the 300-minute? I don't have that. I'm going to go ahead and add that. But what you can see is you can see the uh, daily... 
Let me uh, change this to 300 minute. Uh, and these are these market profiles, in essence, are really, you know, if you were driving, when you do drive home from work today or wherever you might go uh, run an errand, you know that there are certain areas where you're going to see traffic at certain times of the day. In the stock market, we get to take a look at what the uh, drivers are doing, the bulls and the bears, and we can identify uh, congestion areas, con congestion zones. And what you and I are looking at, and especially here, I want you to notice the uh, blue uh, horizontal lines going across my screen. If you take a look at the data box, you're going to see top W, control W, bottom W, and then you're going to see it, you know, for, you know, you can, so W is for week, D is for day, 300, you've got it, it's for the 300 minute chart. On this stage here, I'm not so interested in a 300-minute uh, time frame. What you and I will be watching is this uh, area where price has had found the most amount of congestion. And this is on the daily time frame. That's right at the 46.23.30 level out here. And you can see price hit it, found it as to be a, a resistance level. It has deflected back. So there's really going to be an area. There's really two price points to watch for inside the NQ as you come into the uh, close today. And that's going to be the high from July 31st at uh, about five o'clock in the morning and that high is going to be 4608.75 if you close above that that gives you an a to b equals cd to the upside as well as closing above that you want to see price close above the uh, 4623 area if you put both those things in the mix and that's what occurs out there that would go ahead and give you that a to b equals cd to the upside uh, but not until those things happen otherwise the message here is prices found a uh, an intermediate term level of resistance and it says price could easily move back all the way down to the bottom of the box which as you can see is held as support in fact what you can see out here is if that's what occurs over the course of the next three hours you'll first your first level of support is going to be 4560 if it fails there then it's going to be the top of that 300 uh, uh, box area which is at 4548. And if it were to fail there, then it's all the way down to the bottom of that 300-minute uh, chart. So I think on the NQ, it's really going to be important because that price oscillator inside the composite, that joining along with the uh, NASDAQ, uh, the uh, New York Stock Exchange, I'm not too worried about the uh, message inside of the uh, Dow, at least not at the moment. So to me, it's all about the NQ. It's all about the uh, composite. That being said, we can <coughs> come back here and take a look at the ES Mini. But that being said, let's just step over and take a look at what's going on inside the QQQ ETF series right now. And as we take a look at it, what it has done for the past uh, two trading sessions, we know that the Qs had broken out of a consolidation. That consolidation high being the April 27th level. And that was at 111.16. We saw a breakout of that area with volume. That was on July 16th. That was 29 million shares that was taken. Out. Well, 31 million shares. That was with volume. The very next day it was with that wide range bar gap up 35 million shares so up and above it with some volume out there what has occurred over the last two days out here is we've seen price pull back and test the top of resistance uh, which now becomes support and that's at 111.16 that's a mark that you're going to want to pay attention to two days ago it was 25 million yesterday the volume was 22 million again that was going against a volume of 31 million so light volume pullback now what you can see here today inside the queues you can see that they're trading right at about the bottom of that market profile, right around 11206. That's an important mark for the queues to close above today. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge for daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's off 22, S&P's up 5. Let's go out to California to uh, visit with Garo. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this, uh, this morning for you? <laughs> Thank you, sir. How about you? I am doing uh, very well. And uh, so my recollection is we had a conversation a uh, week ago or so about Apple being able to get down to both the 200-day uh, exponential moving average as well as the gap. Uh, the breakout gap out there, and I think you were always taking a look at these trades to the short side. How's my recollection? Um, yes, uh, absolutely. I was short um, on uh, I was short on Monday and Tuesday. Um, I shorted at 120 dollars. I got out of it yesterday at 114. Uh, today went down to 112, and it shoot up. Um, uh, do you think we're going to see 105 or 106? Or it's going to go flat here, and then it's going to go higher. Well, what, what Apple's done so far, it's done what you and I uh, expected and anticipated as a result of that island top uh, reversal signal, uh, which is a very bearish pattern. What you and I also did the day that we looked at it, I had gone back uh, after we had hung up and during the break, and I came back, and what I did on the Apple chart is we looked at all the other island reversal tops that were out there. Uh, five or six of them. And obviously in the right. past, they've been able to get back and take out those highs because we're at all-time highs. We know that. Right. I don't know right. if it'll do it this time or not. <clears throat> when you break an uh -huh. area of support or, uh, or <clears throat> when you start to break down, 
which in this case here, Apple did. We have to go look to the levels of where support might be. That's exactly what Apple did this morning, was it went right down to the breakout area from the trading session of January 28th. And on January 28th, the volume was 146 million shares. Now, even yesterday, with all of the selling, all of the hubbubaloo that was going on, it was only pushing down with 124 million shares. Accelerated volume to the downside? Yes. Still less volume than the uh, support level of where it broke out. So to see it bounce today is not to be unexpected. Volume so far today, 73 million shares. We've got another couple hours worth of trading, two and a half hours worth of trading. Is it likely to uh, go ahead and double the volume and uh, exceed uh, that breakout area? I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it's going to. Um, so now your question is, will it get down to 105 <clears throat> or... Perhaps the other question would be, where is it, if you want to short it, where is it that you should short this from? And, no. you know, the question becomes, will that 200, so one place that I would look at and consider would be what happens at that 200-day exponential moving average that has for so long acted as support? Will that be a first level of resistance at 119.32? So that right. would be a spot to take a look at. I would say if Apple's able to, for the next couple of weeks here, bounce while the market goes ahead and makes its uh, final high of the summer, you could easily see Apple go ahead and get up into that 123.09 area. And that might be the better area to go ahead and try to short it from. Hmm. Excuse me out there. No, uh, a little, little dust mite or something flew right into my throat there. <clears throat> so at this stage here, it has not been able to bust out those lows. And, you know, and that's now if it closes below 112.48, then the answer to your question, you came up with 105. <clears throat> and at 105, uh, you're looking at what? Uh, you're looking at some type of, tell me what you're looking at at the 105 area. There happens to be some swing points back there, but is there something else that you're looking at at the 105 area? I'm looking at uh, the uh, uh, January 16, 2015. Uh, yep, okay. are, yeah, about um, I don't say exactly 105. I can say between 104 to 108. Yeah, I, and so that's uh, and where folks where where Garo's going to is really the uh, last set of swing points out there where we saw Apple have some support. Yes, so it, yes, it's exactly. what you what you what you really yes. want to see it. So your better trade setup is either to sell it from a higher high. Or let the Apple close below 112.48. Even if it closes with lighter volume, that still opens up the door to go down and test that January 16th level out there. Yes, if it yes, closes, yes. if it closes with volume, it pr it probably more than opens up the door uh, to go test that area. But but it's doing today what it what it uh, what it should do. Now I shared this with subscribers this morning and because I thought it was really the most interesting uh, chart uh, with regard to information that it was providing us. And that's this this chart right here, Garo. Uh, as 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 you may know, I like to take a look at different type of diverging patterns that are out there. And inside the queues, I like to take a look at the equal weight versus the weighted series. My apology, we're going to go to hard break here. But I'll follow back up on this, or you're welcome to hold on uh, through the break. Uh, just let the yes, producer sir. know what you'd yes, like sir. to do. And then we'll go take a look at this uh, equal weighted versus the queues. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live online workshop taking place Wednesday, August 12th, Six Trades for September. This special event will be open to all subscribers to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. Tom will walk you through six trade setups in the market he's identified setting up for September. Two long positions, two short positions, and two option trades. New subscribers will also receive a free copy of his best-selling book, the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system an 88 dollars value but we're not done yet we're also including a tiger's den membership as part of all market insights subscriptions at no cost as well you get tom o'brien's best-selling book the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system 30 days of his newsletter market insights access to his live online workshop six trades for september and access to the tiger's den this offer is only valid for two weeks so don't miss out sign up for your your 30-day free trial to Market Insights at the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Garo, thanks for holding uh, through that uh, break out there. Um, one of the charts that uh, I want to, uh, you know, make you aware of is this uh, chart here. And uh, if you track the, you can you can pull up the symbol QQEW. It is the equal weighted ETF for the uh, Nasdaq. And what I like doing with this chart is, uh, whereas you've got the weighted indice and the Qs with Apple being the number one weighting, what's interesting about divergent patterns inside the equal weight is it helps you ahead of time understand uh, the market and its ability to go ahead and make a uh, bottom or make a top out there. And what you'll notice, with the exception, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, with the exception of one uh, situation out here, one, one time period where there was some divergence, the red arrow that's on my screen, with the exception of that one time, we can go back further to the left-hand side of the chart, with the exception of that, the equal weighted ETF divergence, when it's making higher lows, uh, the market or the queues resolve themselves in that direction out here. Now, What's really interesting, and this chart, by the way, folks, the lines that you're looking at on my screen are the actual daily closes. So I'm not interested in the extreme emotion, the open, anything, just simply the close out here. And what I found interesting last night in taking a look at charts was that the, there was a little descending price channel inside the equal weight. And price had broken out above that yesterday, even with everything. So that said to me that the uh, troops, that the army was working harder than the generals. 
And we can see that it's continued that advance out here today. And in fact, the equal weighted is above, from a closing standpoint, is below the July 17th, I'm going to guess, is where that high was. It's actually trading above that level right now, or even the July 21st area. Whereas so we have another little divergence that is appearing inside the equal weight. So that says to me that there is uh, plenty of strength inside of the NDX 100. Its price oscillator, which I can't show you, is actually still above zero. So if the troops are going to work that hard, that says, and it can go ahead and maintain this pattern, I won't know until the end of the day, if it can maintain this pattern here, that would say that being able to short Apple from a higher level is more likely the outcome. So, girl, I would suggest uh, taking a look at that. I would then also say, and we talked about it before uh, we had actually gone out to you, I would say, you know, if the composite were to finish about right here, the uh, price oscillator is just above zero. That's bullish. That says that uh, prices continue, can continue, easily continue to move to higher ground. And then I would put as the uh, last element would be the uh, futures market. And we know that the NQ is up against a pretty stiff resistance, which is a little bit higher than what we're trading right now. Now it's in the 46.23 level. If you see a close of about 46.23, you would be able to short Apple. You should be able to short Apple from a higher level. So that's uh, that's just that's my take in trying to put together those pieces of that puzzle for you. How does that sound? Or what questions? What questions does that pose for you? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Here, I'm actually I'm not looking at it that way. I'm looking at it that uh, today's candle uh, and tomorrow's candle. It's going to go higher until it touches the five-day simple moving average. Uh, you don't use that five-day simple. To me, it's very important. But it's going to it's going to hit that 200-day around 120 area, and then it's going to roll over from there. Uh, this yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's which you, which is very, certainly real possible. And the, the figure, folks, that Garo's looking at right now is the one seventeen, the ninety-ish uh, type area uh, yes. out there. So, um, you know, if you see, you you also had asked me, you know, is it possible that it'll just chop around here and move sideways? If you were to see uh, three tests of the one twelve forty eight level on light volume and get rejected, that would uh, tell you that hey, Apple could easily bounce up to that level if not higher. So I hope that that uh, assists you with your uh, trading plan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was very, very good and helpful. In the meantime, I shorted Shaq, S-H-A-K. I keep looking at it, and I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna go down all the way to 21-day moving average, simple moving average, around 57 dollar in that area. So oh, that's great. Uh, I'm, that's great. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be uh, shortening that in the past two, three days. I appreciated your time, sir. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, sir. You bet. Nice Thanks so much for calling. That was a girl out in uh, California. Uh, he is uh, shorting uh, Shake Shack. Now, in the case of uh, Shake Shack out here, S-H-A-K is the uh, ticker symbol. We can see that it's pulled back today, and where it's pulled back to is uh, its weekly, um, uh, uh, its weekly. Uh, uh, center of the box, the uh, point of control, where you see the most uh, level of buyers and sellers. So in order for Shake Shack to continue lower, and its next level of support would be down at about the 59, the 73 to the uh, 61 area, because that'll be the top of a daily box and the bottom of the weekly. Gar, you're going to need to see price really close below that. So watch for those areas to act as some kind of support inside of Shake Shack. Had a request to go take a look at uh, Google. Our listener wants to uh, take a look at Google from the long side. So let's go look at GOOG, which we know had uh, broken out with uh, some major volume out here on the trading day of July 17th after the uh, earnings release the day before. 100, uh, or 11 million shares to the upside. Um, you know, the, the biggest problem with regard to uh, Google is not the mere fact that it has a gap. It's that unlike Apple, which has now tested that gap on lighter volume, but, uh, you know, it pulled back with pulled back with too much volume yesterday. That doesn't mean that a bounce, you know, can't occur out here. Uh, we'd really like to see equities, ETFs, come back into breakout areas, which is exactly what you and I were looking at inside of Apple. Now we're looking at a breakout area inside of Google. And and the ultimate buy, in essence, inside of Google would be coming back into the 
what looks like the 580-68 area and do it with uh, light volume. Not that uh, little line that I drew across the uh, screen out here. So that being said, you know, if we take a look at, uh, at Google from another perspective out here, you know, there was a consolidation uh, that was in play from about the 600 level to about 500. So that made it 100 points. Uh, once it broke above uh, 600, that gave you a range of about a $700, uh, $700 completion. We actually saw a price get up to 678.64. Uh, that says that maybe there's some limited uh, upside in the case of uh, Google as well. Uh, if I take a look at what it has been doing volume-wise ever since it made that high uh, on its pullbacks out here, which would be the which would be the trading days of July 23rd and the 24th, about three million, 3.6 million shares in each of those. And on the move up here, it's been with light volume. That says to me that Google, more likely than not is going to go ahead and try to get back into that uh, 580 area. So I don't see necessarily a long position here um, other than maybe some type of intraday uh, trade out there. So that is on ticker symbol G-O-O-G. If we go take a look at uh, what else can we look at inside the uh, markets out here? Uh, let's go look at, you know, let's go back to some of these other divergent uh, patterns out here. Let's go take a look at and I have so many, and they're all really useful tools out here. Here's one that says that there's some, uh, that there's some problems ahead. And those problems ahead, if you take a look at the uh, top chart out here, this happens to be the S&P 500. The bottom is the, uh, is the Western Asset High Income Opportunity Fund out there. So it is a, it is a, uh, and, and these bond funds here help us to determine what type of liquidity there is in the market. What we can see here, if you're looking at the different lines on my chart, is that the the uh, the income opportunity fund out here, this uh, this bond fund, does a really good job of when you see a divergence, helping you to understand the future direction, the future direction of price. This is not going to be used as a timing tool, but it's one that tells you that hey, things are just simply not syncing up. What we can see right now, and and, and actually, if you take a look at those red horizontal lines. It was a consolidation. I just mentioned a consolidation inside of Google, which basically is completed within about 20 bucks or so. Here we see a consolidation that was going on inside the HIO from about the December 2014 time frame. It broke it back in June of 2015. You know, our markets to a certain extent have been consolidating as well. But once we saw a break of that, uh, that said that, hey, you were going to see some type of retracement inside of the S&P 500. We actually saw that take place back around June the uh, 23rd when price moved down into lows of July 7th, July 8th out there. Now what we can see is this, uh, is this bond fund has continued to make uh, lower highs out here while we see a divergence with, in fact, the S&P making higher lows. So at some point in time, this is a uh, this is a tool that says, hey, there's a liquidity issue. And that's what's really important, right? When prices are going to fall and fall and not be held up, it's because you've got a liquidity issue. Much like you and I take a look at the VIX index and, and pay attention to that in relation to its 50-day exponential moving average, just as you and I take a look at the Euro-Japanese yen. In the case of the Euro-Japanese yen, because that's the carry trade, uh, when this is traveling in a different direction than the uh, markets and there's a, enough of a divergence there, it tells you that the markets are going to Go ahead and get back on track with the direction. It's a directional indicator out here with regard to what's going on inside of that uh, currency pair. At this moment, there is no divergence for us to be paying attention to inside of that. You know, we took a look at the ETF for the equal weight of the uh, Qs. Uh, we also have the equal weight for the S&P 500. And as we take a look at it right now, uh, we can see earlier in the day, maybe like around 11.30 or so, I uh, went ahead and decided to draw on that same little descending price channel that you and I looked at inside the QQEW. And inside the equal weight for the S&P 500, which has a similar pattern, what we noticed out here, what I noticed out here, was price was pushing right up into that resistance level. If it can clear above that yellow line out there, uh, it'll go ahead and join the equal weight inside the uh, queues out there. And uh, that would say that, uh, you know, prices are breaking out, then what happens? Then you start to take a look at retracements or moves back to the high out there uh, inside, in this case here. Um, you know, you'd probably time it with regard to what the equal weight is doing versus what the weighted ETF structure, the uh, spies are doing. You know, other... Um, oh, here's one. Um, here's a, a chart. Uh, last week, I believe it was, or the week before, 
John and Philly, Z in our Tigers den had called and asked, was there anything that I saw inside of uh, the uh, Treasury bonds that would indicate that a uh, high was coming? And what I suggest, and at that stage of the uh, game, the answer was no. But what I suggested was that he take a look at, and I can't tell you why this works. I just know that this works. And, and if you were to trade uh, the TLT, the TBT, any of those types of vehicles, you absolutely need to use this. Now, I've got the continuous contract up on my screen. That's not what you would want to use in order to use this. But the continuous contract here allows me to show you example after example after example. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but it works... Uh it works the majority of the time. I mean, upper 90% level. So it is worth paying attention to. And at that stage that the question came in, I suggested take a look at putting the uh, stochastic oscillator, just the stochastic, uh, on your screen. In fact, there's no reason for me. I've got the volume out here. I don't really need the volume on there. So let's just go ahead and turn that off. There we go. And take a look at that stochastic. And when I say stochastic, I'm just using just the standard 1433, um, you know, settings that are typically the default on uh, most uh, systems out there. And what you'll notice is that when that stochastic starts to make, let's say in this case here, let's take a look at what's really going on. If you go back to the trading day of about July 27th, let me pull this over here. From July 27th, the reading was uh, 93.48. The reading here back on August the 3rd was 92.81. So see, it's made a... Uh, a lower high out here, while at the same time, on that trading day of August 3rd, the uh, T-bond futures were able to go ahead and make a higher high. That's the kind of divergence that in the past, and when I say in the past, let's just go look at the most recent one, and that takes you back to the day of March 24th, up to the high that was put in on April 3rd, and you can see a little bit more. It's easier, it's, it's easier on Tiger TV to see that divergence, but there is one. If you put it on your screen, on your tool, go put the, uh, go put the current contract out there or go ahead and put the uh, continuous to see all of those uh, unique patterns. Now, it doesn't tell you where price is going to go to. That means you have to use other tools, retracement tools, uh, uh, A to B equals C, D patterns out here, uh, some type of tools, swing points, volume analysis. Uh, there's a number of different tools that you can use to help identify where, you know, in, in Garo's case, he uses, you know, five-period exponential moving average. Sometimes, I believe, he uses the 21. Use something that works for you to help identify where price is likely to head to. The last bottom that came in here where we saw a divergence that took place back around the uh, May 12th level you know you got a, a little decent bounce out here so this says to me that uh, Treasury bond, uh, the Treasury bond futures want to actually move south. Where, um, you know, I'm not going to go spend too much time on that. I would say, again, if you're just looking at retracements level levels, you're looking at 153.31, 151 and a quarter out there, you know, as your target. But the point is that there is a divergence that is in place that in the past has certainly mattered. And if you remind me from time to time, we'll come back and we'll go ahead and take a look at that, that chart out there. So many cool different uh, tools that you and I can use that others really don't, but they provide us with a ton of information. You know, here's, here's one. You know, and this one works uh, beautifully. Uh, this one here just simply takes a look at uh, Richard Arms Index, the uh, trend out here. And again, remember, when you're looking at a line chart on Stevie's screen, they're just closes. So it has nothing to do with intercession highs. These are just simply closes out here. And you take a look at all the green lines. That's when that uh, trend index closes above two. Most of you know that. And when it closes above two, look, you're looking at my screen out here. The reality is that in all of those cases, you saw at least a bounce. In many cases, those are all the green lines. You saw more than a bounce. You saw some type of uh, short-term bottom that had formed just using the combination of that out there. So this is Steve Rhodes with TFN right now. we got the Dow. She's trading off 11 points. S&P's up six. Composite of 35. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A-Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A-Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio, consider the Principal Protected Market Safe CD from Everbank. They've just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your deposited principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Intrigued yet? The August 17th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back to the Trader's Edge Show. Dow's off 29, S&P's up about uh, four points. Let's, uh, as we close out the last four minutes here, let's go take a look at a couple of individual stocks, see what they're doing. Let's go take a look at the uh, leader dollar-wise to the upside. It's price line, uh, about 1.6 million shares today. That is taking out the uh, swing point. I believe that's the all-time swing point high uh, from all the way back on August the 11th. That price point, oh, shoot, let me turn that off. There we go. My apology. Uh, let me turn a couple of things off. Let me turn that off and that off. There we go. 
So now as we just go ahead and uh, clear clear that up a little bit. So it's up up, up above 1329.90. That had 2 million shares. You're up uh, above it so far today. You've got 1.6 million shares out there. Uh, we've got a, a nice little wide-ranging bar gap up at the stage of the game. Where's price headed to in the case of uh, Priceline? You know, what you've got to do is you've got an A to B equals CD pattern that could be out here. If we take a look at that, our A point on this is going to be all the way down down here at the uh, lows looks like you know we could we'll just use uh, January 29th as our A point your B point out here back on the trading day of May the 4th and your C point down here on June 29th uh, go ahead come on work with me come on oh my goodness there we go. That says you've hit the one-to-one -one as we speak right now. Uh, and that doesn't mean that it's over. When you come into a D point, A to B equals CD, it's just simply a lightning bolt. That's the uh, terminology. We're basically uh, utilizing three points to go ahead and measure our fourth point out there. And that helps us to identify one potential level of where price will head to. You gap up into it with the type of volume that it has today. It says more likely than not, that's not the end of the move for Priceline. The next, and as long as Priceline can stay above that 1329 level, it says more likely than not, you're looking at 1470 out there as its next price objective. And that's in uh, Priceline. USANA Health out there, USNA, you know, makers, distributors of all kinds of uh, health related uh, products out there, multi-level marketing uh, company. Uh, it's taken out its uh, swing point from July 6th. That had volume of 114,000 shares. You're up above that with 275,000 shares. So that looks pretty good. Just let me pull this back on a weekly time frame, see if this is at its all-time highs. Yeah, it most certainly is. That is on USANA healthcare usna uh, to the downside here let's go take a look at disney see what it's doing dis is the uh, ticker symbol uh, down with so this is the weekly chart out here certainly down with uh, big volume um, that big volume if i take a look at a daily chart you're going to take a look at where it last broke out or where it last had volume i guess right yeah where it last broke out was at 98.82 we're well away from that what it's doing it's just simply pulling back into a, a swing point from june 9th out there that only had 7 million shares. You've done 46 million shares today. Pretty good chance that uh, price is going to test 107.65, and if it breaks below that, uh, 98.82 may be in the cards for Walt Disney World, really Disney, because it's more than just Walt Disney World out there. So as we uh, as we come to the close, uh, you know, and we look at it at 1.57 p.m., we're going to see as we look at the price oscillators, they're all above zero. New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ Composite, and even the Dow out here. If things were to finish like this, uh, that says as long as tomorrow prices continue to move higher, that says that prices will move higher maybe for a couple of uh, weeks out here as we uh, chop around. That will tell you that it is the uh, buyers that are in control. That doesn't mean because this has been a heck of a year for those that want to trade in both directions. And what that says is neither side of the trade should get very giddy out here. Instead, let's just fall back to the uh, technical patterns, which are the most fundamental aspect of any stock. What are buyers and sellers doing with the stock? Folks, stay tuned. Our man David White, he'll be up next on this wonderful Wednesday. Then we've got the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in tomorrow again at 1 o'clock. Go ahead and test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You can get that on the homepage of TFN.com. Have a great Wednesday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. 
You're watching Tiger TV.